Now, in previous videos, if you've been doing them in the order that I have them in Canvas, um, you'll notice that I've been talking about the regular or normal shape for a certain graph. Um, that's because I know what my parent functions look like. And it's going to be important that eventually you know what your parent functions look like. And it'd be great if you memorize them. If you have to have them on your note sheet as you go through this class, that's fine too. But I promise you, if you can memorize what these things look like, you're going to be better off in pre-cal and you're going to be better off in calculus. Definitely in calculus. So this graph, f of x equal to a number, looks like a horizontal line at that particular number. And in this case, the number is one, okay? And this is what we call a constant function, okay? This next one is f of x equal to x, and that looks like a line. So just a normal line through the origin. And this one is called the identity function. Identity. I cannot spell. Identity function. And why is it called that? Because your x values will equal your y values since the y value equals x, right? So the, they're the same. And then here you've got a square function. And I don't think they call it square function. We know these as quadratic functions. Okay, so x squared will be quadratic. That looks like um, a U shape. Then we also have the cubic functions. which look like this. So kind of like a really steep chair, I guess. Um, but that's what the cubic functions look like. Here we have the absolute value function. And this one we've seen quite a bit. It kind of looks like a line on this side but then the part of the line that would be going downward now goes upward because the absolute value of negative x values are going to be positive values. Then we have the square root function. And so this one's the only one that's different. It doesn't have like a center like all the other ones do. Like this is your center, this is your center, your center, your center your center, even this one has a center. This one does not. It has a beginning and then it goes from there. So it starts here and then it goes in this direction, okay? So it's a little bit different. It doesn't have a center, but it has like a beginning point. They call it the leftmost point because since it's going that way forever, this is the furthest left point. And if your function happened to be going in the other direction, then it's called the rightmost point. So my cubic, cube root, so this is a cube root function. This one looks like this. Okay. And it's also kind of a chair, but a little bit, it's going in different directions. Know that instead of going up, it's going to the right. And instead of going down, it's going to the left. Okay. And then here we've got the rational functions. So there's a difference between when the variable downstairs is just an exponent of one, and then it'll look like this. And this piece will never cross the y-axis. This piece will never cross the x-axis. This piece will never cross the x-axis. And this people piece will never cross the y-axis. These are called asymptotes. And when we get into rational functions, we'll learn a whole lot more about asymptotes. So 
we'll get to that when we when we get there but um, so for the x squared function this one's a little bit different it does kind of look like the same thing on this side but on this side when you square a negative number a negative number times itself actually turns out to be a positive number so then the left hand side is also going up okay and so that's going to affect things a little bit when you're um, when you're graphing this one so both of them are going to go up instead of one going up and one going down okay but these are the basic graphs these there are nine of them total and if you can memorize what all of these look like that is fantastic that is really what needs to happen but if my research pieces but if you cannot memorize them i would highly suggest that you um put them on your note sheet because you will need to reference them in the future plus when you're graphing things on the, the reviews or the tests um, you do want to know whether or not the image that you're graphing looks like the basic shape it should have Okay, you definitely want to know that and especially as things are going to get more complicated as we keep going Because yes, we have a square and a cube function But what happens when I throw an x to the fourth x to the fifth x to the sixth? It's just going to get more and more and more complicated. So we definitely need to get these down um, so that we can move on to the more complicated what are called polynomials and then of course the more complicated rational functions things will get more intense as we go along in the algebra material